Um, the, um, either of you can answer this because it seems like both of you have experience that may speak to it or but perhaps can't. Um, I'm very interested in trade-based money laundering and the way by which transnational criminal organizations or terrorist organizations such as Hezbollah move dollars outside of the U.S. to their wherever they wish to take it. Uh, can you speak to the information sharing between the IRS and the Treasury Financial Crimes Enforcement Network, otherwise known as FinCEN, for identifying these illicit activities? Senator, I can't speak to that specifically. I am aware that there are information sharing, both treaty provisions and also information sharing agreements that the United States has with other countries. Um, I, in practice, have not had experience with those, but I do know those are out there. In your previous experience in a previous administration, did you have any experience, any kind of involvement with this? I did not, Senator. I was on the domestic side when I was at Treasury. There was an Office of International Tax Council that, that may have had experience, but I, I was on the domestic side at Treasury. And you, Mr. Masinich? Uh, Senator, I can't speak directly to it, but happy to follow up. Let me ask, because this may be something that, despite that, you could still speak to. Can you imagine that the tax, and I'm, I'm not arguing against them, but I'm just asking, to the tax privacy rules under the IRS Code Section 6103 prevent Treasury from further enhancing this information sharing? Uh, my uh, reaction to that question, Mr. Senator, is, is no. Um, in the, information, the treaty provisions that I'm familiar with and the information sharing provisions, those are, are tax provisions. And so sharing information under those provisions would be permissible uh, because it is for tax enforcement purposes, um, and, and that would be permissible under the 6103 provisions. And Mr. Uh, uh, Senator, I can't speak to it. And uh, either of you in your experience, again, going along my concern regarding the uh, trade-based money laundering, uh, what steps, do you have any awareness of what steps Treasury has taken to better detect criminal and terrorist organizations and their activities in money laundering? Yeah, I'm not familiar with those um, activities, Senator. Mm -hmm. uh, I know it's something FinCEN is quite focused on. It has not been, not been in my portfolio, but I know uh, they're quite focused on trade-based money laundering. Okay. The um, next question is on duty drawback. Mr. Masinich, uh, the Trade Facilitation and Enforcement Act of 2015 uh, was explicit that uh, regulations will be promulgated by February the 24th, 2018, but U.S. manufacturers still are waiting on guidance on the duty drawback, which is, as you know, but for context, the, re the refund of duties, taxes, and fees on imports when those items or like-kind items are exported. The refund process allows U.S. manufacturers to compete on a level playing field with foreign companies, pro-U.S. Pro, pro jobs, pro-manufacturing, pro-export. I understand Treasury and CBP are continuing to process regulations in this area, but a simple question. If you, confirmed, if, if you are confirmed, will you support U.S. manufacturers by fulfilling the intent of the Trade Facilitation and Enforcement Act with respect to duty drawback, which again was supposed to be released by February 24th, and the absence of release is impacting the transition period. Yes, can commit to that. Uh, the Treasury staff has made me aware it's important to you, and, and we are working very hard on it. Yes. Uh, thank you both, and thank you for offering your service, and I yield back, Mr. Chair.